Hey, what's up guys? Jay's Two Cents here, and as you know, I'm a little bit of a water cooling elitist. Or probably just downright snob. Now there's a lot of things I've covered on this channel. I've covered water cooling, radiators, we talked about pumps, dual pumps, SLI configs, we talked about parallel configs. We've done a lot of things when it comes to water cooling. But there's one thing that I've not talked about a whole lot, and it really seems to be tripping a lot of you up when it comes to part selections when putting together your custom water cooling kits. That's right guys, today we are gonna talk about fans, specifically airflow versus static pressure. Now there's a lot of different specs when it comes to fans and I don't want to freak you guys out and have you guys at the end of this video be like, oh my God, I'm so much more confused than when we started. I don't know what fans to buy. This whole thing is stupid. I'll be honest, there was a time when I was there and I just didn't know what fans to buy because there are probably more fan combinations on the market than any other component combination you can think of. So that's why today I'm gonna simplify this and we're only gonna talk about static pressure versus airflow because pretty much that's all you need to know. Now, of course, in terms of the big picture, there are a lot of stats that play a part in this. Amperes, watts, voltage, RPMs, motor bearing types, sleeve bearings, uh, fluid bearings. I mean, there's a lot of different things to talk about when it comes to fans. So I'm really gonna try and focus today simply on airflow versus static pressure. That seems to be the part most people get tripped up on when it comes to picking their parts. Now I've got three fans in front of me. I've got the Cooler Master Jetflow 120. I've got the Phobia NBE Loop. This is uh, pretty much a noise blocker rebrand. It's the same exact fan. And then we have got the Corsair SP120. Now this is the fan right here that I blame for all of your confusion and mine in the past. You see, Corsair came out with these fans a couple of years ago, and they were bold enough to brand them specifically based on their optimization, SP120s being static pressure and AF140s being airflow. Now, when it comes to airflow and static pressure, let's talk about what that means. Airflow is the amount of air that is capable of being moved by the fan blades at maximum RPM in an open air environment. That means no restrictions either behind or in front of the fan. It's the fan is just free to move all the air that it can and the only thing stopping it is the atmospheric pressure. That is it. Static pressure means you take that same figure, but it's also the amount of resistance it's able to push through or the amount of torque, if you will, of the fan to be able to move that air when resistance is introduced. Now, what fan should you use and how do you know where to use them? Well, if we're talking about chassis fans, specifically the Arc XL behind me, we'll use that as an example. If you have hard drive cages right in front of those intake fans, let's face it, a lot of systems do that. A lot of cases do that where you have the fans are right there and then boom, there's a hard drive cage right against those. You've got like a quarter of an inch and some slats for air to go through. That's a situation where I would personally recommend going with an SP fan. In fact, those are the fans I ran in my 900D because I had the hard drive cages right in front of it. But if you've got an open air uh, case or you've got hard drives that can be relocated so you have a nice open environment, I definitely recommend going with some sort of an airflow optimized fan or in this case here, the NBE loop. But we'll come back to this one here because this is a little bit of a unique fan. It's a little bit more of a hybrid. But the open air performance of something like the Jetflow 120s would certainly be more optimal in a chassis environment than an SP fan would. Now, if you're talking about heat sink towers or radiators where you've got all those tiny little fins to push through, then it's definitely more optimized to put some sort of a static pressure fan. Okay, now we've talked about where you put them. Let's go ahead and talk about what makes a static pressure fan a static pressure and an airflow fan an airflow. Now, yes, static pressures, of course, have airflow. We already talked about that. But what makes them different is right here. This, the, it's, it's this. It's the blades. The blades make all the difference. If you were to pop this blade off and put an airflow blade on there, it changes the entire dynamic of the fan regardless of what the motor specs are. And with that said, it's the closed off narrow gaps between the static pressure optimized fans that make them static pressure optimized. As the air goes through these fans, these blades, as they're turning, they have nowhere to go but through the fan. Now there is a drawback to static pressure fans and that is that on the back side of the fan or the exhausting side of the fan, the air tends to come out at a much wider degree. Let's see if I can do this. The air out of this fan would come out more like this rather than being very channeled like that. 
Now that would also mean that the air that's coming off the sides of these fans are very, very pressure optimized, but it also means the very center portion of the fan is not going to be quite as high pressure as the outside. There's a little bit of trade-off when it comes to the blade design. Of course, there are other blade designs that try and make up for that. That's where all the fans differ is in their blade design. On the E-loops uh, e right here, you can see they also have that very narrow uh, spacing between the blades, but this particular fan also has a scoop on the side that eliminates the amount of air that gets lost coming out of the edges of the fan and tries to redirect them more straight. Now when it comes to the airflow approach, you could just do like Cooler Master does and have these massive gaps. I mean, I can stick my finger straight through there, not in a, in a, dirty, in a dirty sense. But the idea here is that as the fan blades are turning and is creation, creating this pressure zone where the air is able to travel straight through the fan and you get a much more directional airflow. Now that's what makes this fan right here pretty good in a, in a pressure optimized or an airflow optimized scenario. The difference is you sometimes need to really crank up the RPMs when you stick these on a radiator in order to get the airflow through all of the fin resistance. I know it seems like I threw a lot of information at you guys, but here's the bottom line. If you're putting case fans in a case, go with something that's airflow optimized on the exhaust side. And if you're going with something that has a lot of hard drive cages or resistance in the front, you definitely are going to want to go with static pressure. When it comes to cooling towers and radiators, I always recommend static pressure. Now the static pressure rating is always measured in MMH2O. You don't even need to bother yourself with what that means, just know the higher the number, the higher the static pressure. But the next thing you want to concern yourself with is the RPM at which the fans are producing those specs. Some fans ramp up to 2500, 3000 RPMs that get the same specs as fans that are running at half the speed. The higher the RPM, the higher the noise. So guys, I'm going to go ahead and get the heck on out of here. This was just kind of a brief discussion on static pressure versus airflow, and I hope it's helped answer some of your questions. Put your questions down in the comments. I will do the best I can to answer those. And guess what? I got a nifty little check mark next to my name now. That's pretty freaking cool. I guess that means I'm verified on YouTube. After 106,000 subscribers, YouTube finally believes I am who I am. So if you guys see any comments from anybody that doesn't have the little check mark, it ain't me. Just say it. I'm gonna get the heck on out of here, guys. As always, I appreciate all of your support, especially during this fundraiser campaign for CES. I love you guys for it. I'm gonna continue to bring you the best content that I possibly can, regardless of how anything turns out with that campaign. And I'm gonna go ahead and get the hell on out of here. So go buy some fans, buy the right fans, the ones that work for you, and don't break the budget, whatever that budget may be. See you in the next one.